Delta Yankee, crossing the motorway. Golf Delta Yankees, code land runway 04, surface wind 05, zero degrees 1, 5 knots. Safe land runway 04, Golf Delta Yankees. Congratulations, that completes the final flight test for your private pilot's license. Almost anyone from the age of 17 years onwards has the ability to become a pilot. The purpose of this video is to show you the main exercises that you will practice in the gaining of your private pilot's license. In addition, I hope you will glimpse a sense of the fun and a sense of the freedom that only a pilot knows. We'll show you a first solo and we'll even follow a short cross-country navigation exercise. You'll see what is required for the ground examinations and at the end of this video we will take a look at some of the goods that are available for the private pilot to purchase. So, Let's start with a look at the controls. This is the cockpit. At first sight, the cockpit may look confusing, but in reality, it's no more complex than a sophisticated motor car. Here we have the airspeed indicator. This shows us how fast we're traveling through the air. The artificial horizon for orientation without reference to the visual horizon. The altimeter, which shows us our height or altitude. The direction indicator, showing magnetic compass heading the vertical speed indicator giving rate of climb and rate of descent, the turn coordinator which shows us roll, yaw and balance where the air flows evenly about the fuselage. Down here, the engine gauges indicating oil pressure, temperature and engine functions. And here the throttle quadrant, the throttle, the mixture lever, the carburetor heat control. And this is the parking brake in the on position. And these are the aircraft radios for communication and navigation. And this is the RPM or power gauge. Down here, the electrical switches for such things as lights and fuel pumps. This is the fuel selector with two tanks, the right tank and the left tank. And here the flap selector. Here the trim wheel, used to relieve control column pressures during flight. The control column. Movement of the control column towards you will cause the elevator to go up, the nose of the aircraft to pitch up. Movement of the control column forward causes the elevator to go down, for the nose of the aircraft to pitch down. Rotation of the control column to the left causes the left aileron to go up, the right aileron to go down, and for the aircraft to roll, then yaw to the left, followed by spiral dive to the left. Rotation to the right causes the left aileron to go down, right aileron to go up, and for the aircraft to roll, yaw and spiral dive to the right. For balance flight, the rudder pedals. Movement of the pedal to the right causes the nose of the aircraft to yaw to the right, roll to the right, followed by spiral dive to the right. Movement of the pedal to the left causes the rudder to move to the left, followed by yaw to the left, roll to the left and spiral dive to the left. The flaps. The flaps are used to alter the lift and drag generating abilities of the wings. The trim wheel, used by the pilot to relieve control column forces. By moving the trim wheel forwards or aft, the pressures on the control column can be reduced to zero. And now the throttle quadrant. The throttle, more power, throttle open. Less power, throttle closed. The mixture lever. More fuel, mixture rich. Less fuel, mixture lean. And no fuel, the idle cutoff position. The carburetor heat control. Ice can be prevented or eliminated by raising the temperature of the air entering the carburetor venturi with the carburetor heat. Hot and cold. 